Look at that. If you could, I mean, literally, if you could smell this, you would be so hungry right now. Good stuff. Hey, guys. This is Daryl with Louisiana Simple Living. Now, today, what I'm going to show you is we, in my garden, I have some uh, tomatillos. And there's a couple different kinds. Some uh, verde, which are basically green tomatillos. There's some amarillo, which is yellow. And there's some perfect core band, but I'm not going to have any of those available right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to harvest some of these tomatillos. We're going to bring it inside. And we're going to make some salsa verde out of it. Now, salsa verde is, is that, uh, that cool green salsa. Sometimes kind of creamy, but it's a salsa. And in the, in the Mexican restaurants, you kind of equate with uh, eating chips. So you got your red sauce and your green sauce. Well, the tomatillos you use to make salsa verde. So that's what we're going to do today. Yeah, so the tomatillos, they grow, they're about, you know, golf size, golf ball size, maybe a little bit smaller. And they have a husk that grows around them. So they're, a little, they're in the tomato family, but they're a little bit different. So they got this husk that grows around it. All right, so this is just an example here that we pull one out. This is a, a verde tomatillo. And as you can tell, it has this husk, and it's already kind of blown out the husk. As it gets to ripeness, it blows out the husk. So you know, we'll take these, we'll take the husk off. And I'm going to go ahead and, and put it in my box here and grab a few more that are ripe. And again, you can tell if they're ripe. They don't always blow out the husk, but uh, a few of these here that are ripe. And again, they, they, they differ in size. They're not always huge. Uh, they're not always golf ball size. So. But they're all good, so. Go ahead and harvest those. All right, so what we want to do is give this a good rinse. And like I said, it's about half of them. Uh, we'll get the rest of them washed up. But again, just give it a good rinse, just like any fresh vegetable that you got. All right, we're just going to set her down, let her, let her drip dry there. And I will say, so the idea here, we're getting ready to roast the tomatillas, we're going to roast some onions. We're going to roast some jalapenos, we're going to roast some green pepper, and we're going to roast some garlic. So what we'll do is we'll throw them in the oven at about 550, put a little char on them. We want to have this set up so I can take the tomatillas, put them on here, onions and so forth, and then I'll go in the oven. And now what's important when I put the aluminum foil down here is it does help it kind of, kind of cook, right? But, but also we want, we want to capture all that juice. That juice that comes out of the tomatillas will start seeping out some of their some of their juice some of their flavor we don't want to lose any of that so we use aluminum foil and kind of a raised pan and what we want to make sure is we capture all that and that's going to go in, into the salsa verde at like all right so what, what i just pulled down is a couple of cloves these are elephant garlic this is from my, my uh, harvest from the winter hey guys what we're going to do we you know we saw me harvest the tomatillas out in the garden Brought them inside, we washed them. Now it's time to cut them up. Now, some of these smaller ones, we're not gonna worry about cutting them up. Only the very biggest ones, so we'll give a couple couple of these bigger ones. Again, these about golf ball size ones. The smaller ones, we're not gonna worry too much about. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put them over on this tray. Got a little aluminum foil, got some olive oil on the bottom. And we're gonna spray some more olive oil on them. We're going to throw them in a roaster at 550. Okay, so I got that tray. I'm going to pull the other tray out. So I'm going to go ahead and put these down on this tray. When you, uh, the grind do is when you put something on the skillet, it'll, it'll kind of intensify or concentrate the flavor. And man, that's what we're looking for, it's flavor. So if you take sausage, you take any kind of vegetables and you, you kind of get that flavor going, man, it's, a, it's where it's at. So, all right, so I placed my jalapenos on the tray. Let me grab a couple onions here. And you don't have to dice them and do all that. All you want to do is get them kind of quartered so that you can put it on the tray. And then you want to put it in the roaster, so you want to get a little dry dew on it again, get a little, get a little char on it, and man, that's where the flavor comes from. So, 
We get another layer here. There we go. That's literally all you got to do. Just throw it on here on the fan. Look how pretty all this is. All right, so there we go. All right, the key ingredient to a good salsa verde is cilantro, fresh cilantro. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and chop me up a good bit here. Set it to the side. You gotta work out a little bit because you want it pretty finely chopped. So this makes all the difference in the world. Once we got all the, the onions, the jalapenos, the tomatillas, and the bell peppers cut up, put on a roasting pan. Now it's gonna transfer them into the oven and it's on a roast level at what, 550 degrees. So as you can see, we're gonna go into the roaster. Into the oven on the roast. There we go. All right, so the tomatillas, onions, jalapenos, garlic, and bell peppers have been roasted. We're going to take them out. Got a good little char on. Ooh, look at that. You can smell this. I mean, that's incredibly good. Again, we're not trying to, to burn them. We just want to get a little char on them, which is nothing but flavor. Look at that, if you could, I mean, literally, if you could smell this, you would be so hungry right now. Good stuff. Got a nice little char on them. There's a lot of liquid. We don't want to waste any of this liquid. In the Ninja Blender, this thing really does wonders. Next step is to go ahead and transfer it. Transfer it to the pot. I mean, if you can look at it, it is just beautiful. Got a little bit of char, a little bit of the red, the yellow from the bell pepper, um, and from the tomatillo. It's just looking good. It smells great. So it's got the nonstick service, so I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. We don't want to waste any of this, so we can spatula and get it all out. That's good stuff. It's time to add the additional ingredients. So what we got is some of your plain old white vinegar, distilled white vinegar. We'll add about a cup of that. And again, this is critically important if you're um, from a canning perspective. You want to make sure that you add the vinegar Get all the ingredients at you know the right levels you're supposed to um, to make sure it's safe to last in the in the jar. All right, so here's your vinegar. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this lime. I'm gonna add the whole lime. And what you do is you roll it around. So it kind of it kind of loosens up the uh, the juice. And I got a juicer right here. I'm going to put it in the juicer. That way the seeds don't go in. But all the good lime juice goes in. If you don't have one of these, man, it's, it's fantastic to use. It makes this job a heck of a lot easier. All right, so we're going to put the whole lime in here, the juice. We're going to put the whole, we're going to put the juice from the whole lime in there. Okay, so that's done. Set it back, just kind of keep it a little bit hot. All right, so we're going to add one teaspoon of ground cumin. All 
We add a teaspoon of the crushed red pepper. So not quite a teaspoon is what I added to the red pepper, crushed red pepper. And then again, I add just a just a shake or so of the smoked paprika. I like the flavor and, and the aroma that the smoked paprika gives. So just a little fresh pepper. Fresh pepper, if you have the opportunity, makes all the difference in the world. And then I'm going to add all that uh, cilantro that I cut earlier. We're going to add all that in. <clears throat> Give us a stir first. All right, so what we're going to do at this point, we're going to let it sit here, in, <clears throat> excuse me, and simmer on a low heat. For about 20 minutes, um, you want it to reduce down just a little bit to the consistency that you want. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do is go ahead and transfer salt and verdes on the stove for about 20 minutes. Consistency where it needs to be. And what you want to do is add enough to leave about a half inch or slightly more head space. And that means between where you, where you fill it at to the very top is about half inch or a little bit more. So a big old spoon, so it fills it up pretty easily. Looks like we're going six, number six jar. Again, you don't want to overfill. Can you grab me a jar out of there? No, no, both the stuff. Dishwasher, so we're good. They're sterile. It's tempting because you just you don't want to lose any of this great salsa ready you make, but hey, you don't want to open it. All right, so what we're going to do is go ahead and put the jar, excuse me, put the lids on. So what we're going to do is go and transfer these over. Go ahead and pull the jars out. You'll probably hear uh, some popping here before long. All right, they're not cooperating. There we go. There's a pop. All right. So we took them out. 
You got one pop going. I want that the lid will give a little popping sound when the vacuum pulls it in. Let's start cooling off. We heard one so far. And it, it'll happen over the next, you know, number of hours, even into tomorrow morning. Whoop, there's the second one. Um, it'll go ahead and once you hear that pop, you can tell that the vacuum has sealed it. Make sure you label it. Put what it is and put what date you actually can it, just so you know, because you don't want it to go more than a year, two years, three years, whatever the case may be, because it probably won't still be good. So um, but that's what we got. Salsa Verde. Uh, check out our post on our webpage where we'll have a little bit more specifics on the recipe there. You know, appreciate you, you, you watching the video. Uh, you can see additional content on our webpage on all so, on social media. Um, if you haven't subscribed as yet, please subscribe, ring the notification bell, and like the video. We, we, we want to provide good quality content. We, we strive to do that. Oop, another pop. We strive to provide quality content. You know, your comments or suggestions, put comments down below. Man, we really appreciate it. We want to know what you guys want to see, and we'll strive to provide that for you. Uh, so appreciate watching the video, and we'll see you on the next.